felt. The sword based sneak attack. No, that's wrong. Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Huh? Why not? Because the sword sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you were going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. Which was Sayaka. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her, too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. I don't what? think so either. I think she How used the... the I think she... Think that? I think she used the knife to attack first. Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. I got it! You're talking about her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean, so I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? No, that's not it at all. There's no way Sayaka washed the gold coating off her hands because... I got it! According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at nighttime. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at nighttime, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower here yet. Oh, Girl. My. What the heck? You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. An insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... The one who damaged the sheath with, with the kitchen knife I had been it. the one without the sword. Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. And the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? She tried to murder. Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Makoto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. 
That is a possibility, is it not? Oh, that bad word. Sayaka wanted to on me? That would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. Agreed. I don't I don't I don't think main character would have had the heart to do it. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid. Or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Wait, then you're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she'd planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because... Because... Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being super boring right now. Come on, hurry up and decide who did it. Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Oh, yeah. We gotta decide who we think did it. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. Is, is it really all over? Obviously, I'm committed to finding out who killed her. What can I do? I mean, as the clues go, there's nothing left. Make your argument. Trash duty, dying message, AOE's account. It's easy just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? Uh... Very well. Then let's review oh. all the clues we found up to this point. One more. Shoot. It's easy just to say, but there just aren't any more clues, right? Leon, you are wrong. No, that's wrong. Leon, you are so wrong. You're trying to deflect. You are trying to there deflect right now. There still might right be now. one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? Leon is so trying to deflect, and it's not even funny. The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her, remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? There's no question Sayaka wrote that. I got it! Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still... What the heck do those numbers mean? Because it's because they're not one, all numbers. One zero three seven. It's not all numbers. Hey, Chihiro, you're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. N no, that's not. Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. It's because they're not numbers. Of course, it's because they're not numbers. No, it's a name. Oh, yeah, it looks like. Huh? What? What? No, it's just a look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Is Leon. Aren't these first two, one, one, 
look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Ah, oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was 1-1, one, one, but looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa, you might have finally just said something worth a shit. <laughs> Our little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. Damn it. It's no use. I don't... I just don't know. Rotate the image 180 degrees. Huh? Rotate it. I think maybe I'll see oh something. Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. It's my thought. Mm. You just shot past the clue part and right on to who did it. So, whose name did she write? Siaka's so dying message reveals the real killer's name. Here's my answer. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L E O N. L E O N, or more accurately, Leon. What? What the hell are you talking about? It, it's just a coincidence. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. No, it's not random at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally and had to write upside down, as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. D that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? What? 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 But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. That, that's right! There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. The burnt remains of the button-up shirt, which the killer wasn't able to get rid of. There's something about it we need to pay attention to. I got it! If we look closely at how the shirt was disposed of, we should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're going to say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on, either. You'd need the key to get in, and the one with the key was... the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> no, that's wrong. There was another way to use the incinerator without being the one on cleaning duty. That's exactly that. what proves that Leon is the real killer.
the key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy the evidence. Which means the only possible suspect is whoever had the trash room key. Okay, no. so the person who would have had the trash... Huh? No! The key to the tr whoever was on clip so the only one the person and you'd have to get close to the incinerator No, that's wrong Hold on, I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key But if you can't get past the gate you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator could you yes, you could if you use this. What is it, some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but, uh... But how would you use it? You kind of had to use the glass ball in a certain way, which was... I got it! The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch, and the incinerator would come to life. Someone threw that... threw a gap in the gate? Remember what you said before, Hifumi? Huh? Someone turned... someone turned the incinerator on. Very strange, I'm quite certain. If it was the last... off last time I was down here. Perhaps it was the work of a fairy. Hifumi had the key. So the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Once they'd gotten the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire, if the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Wait, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? The pinpoint like that. accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? that that's right, there's no way. It'd be impossible. Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer... The killer is the ultimate baseball star. Because the killer is the ultimate baseball star. Isn't that right, Leon? Do you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. You, you, you can't be serious. I'm not the killer. These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you. You still won't admit it? Okay then, Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. And with that, we can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered, and the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. The closing argument is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Every case has one last element to bring the class trial to the end. This is the closing argument. In this phase, you will complete a summary of the case. You'll have to produce a flow of events in case, in this case, or for the case, in the form of a comic book. However, you'll notice that in the comic book, there are pieces missing. It is up to you to complete the comic using the tru provided truth panels. Also, if you take aim at a missing section, press the A button. Holy cow. You'll get a hint. That might lead you to a breakthrough. Well then, good luck and have fun.
Oh, okay. I see what happens. It goes, it goes left to right here. Hold on. The killer is you. I think I'd better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. Last night, the killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. From what we can tell, Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. She attacked them with the knife she'd taken from the kitchen earlier. Like, ordering all these events is not easy. Okay. The killer is you! No, I didn't lay out my reasoning right. I need to rearrange the events of the case. The killer is you! Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so I have to th Okay, I should really think about this more. Oh, wait. What? So that's not right? I, I would think that it would be leading to him doing that. Which led her to flee the bat flee to the bathroom, right? Here's exactly what happened. But then something happened that she wasn't prepared for. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. Okay, I gotta really think this out then. Okay. So, I think it's throwing me out that it's left to right. Or right to left. So they got to the door. He opens it. Is shocked to see nobody there. Sayaka, who pulls the knife out, tries to attack Leon first. Leon then happens to bump in. Bump into the sword in retreat. Notices the sword's there. Uses the sword to, in self-defense, to block himself. After attacking... Okay. 
he pulls the sheath out or the sword out of the sheath because it's still in sheath here no it's, but it can't possibly be in the sheath well, well I'm gonna go for it it's okay then she retreats into the door he tries to unhook it realizes he can't and unscrews the door. He bar once he is able to barge in. Sayaka's shocked. Still in shock, she writes Leon's name. In act 3, he finds the lint roller to lint the floor to cover his tracks goes into the incinerator room to then find the crystal ball yeet that across the room laser precision gets there throws his flows and then the burnt thing here's exactly what happened okay let's see how far off I'm... i think i better take one more Last night, the killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. From what we can tell, Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. She attacked them with the knife she'd taken from the kitchen earlier. But then something happened that she wasn't prepared for. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. And that's when she lost her grip on the kitchen knife. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. The killer went after her, but couldn't get the bathroom door open. What they didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily, and there was a trick to opening it. Sayaka knew about that because I told her, but of course the killer had no way of knowing. So instead, the killer forced the door open, took the kitchen knife, and stabbed Sayaka. But with what strength she had remaining, Sayaka left a dying message. To keep the killer from noticing, she wrote it on the wall behind her. And with that, all her strength was gone. With Sayaka dead, the killer quickly began destroying the evidence. First, they took off their shirt, which was covered in their victim's blood. Then they took the lint roller in my room and cleaned up the entire area. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace they'd ever been there. Afterwards, the killer headed to the trash room to destroy their bloody shirt. They tried to burn the shirt using the incinerator there, but the trash room was blocked off by an especially sturdy gate, preventing access to the incinerator. So they came up with a plan to use Hero's crystal ball, which he'd left in the laundry room. The killer managed to throw the ball through the gap in the gate and hit the incinerator switch. For any normal person, that'd be an impossible throw. But the killer had the confidence to take a shot. And that's because the killer was the ultimate baseball star. The crystal ball, thrown with absolute precision, hit the switch on the incinerator, which then quickly roared to life.
having destroyed the final piece of evidence, they left the area with, I imagine, a sigh of relief. But there was one thing they missed. Part of the shirt they'd thrown into the fire burnt away and fell out of the incinerator. The killer didn't notice this, and so left behind a piece of indisputable evidence. Isn't that right, Leon? It would appear that Hero simply forgot his crystal ball in the laundry room. You went there to try and wash the blood out of your shirt, and that's where you saw it, right? Seeing the ball, you thought of a way to take care of everything. So, Leon, do you object to anything that's been said? Do I object? Hell yes, I object! Of course I do! I object, I object, I object! I mean, all of this is just a bunch of stupid theories! You need evidence! Where's the evidence? Without evidence, it's all bullshit! It's bullshit and I refuse to acknowledge it! Well then, I guess this is as good a time as any to present the evidence that proves you did it. Makoto, I believe you're in possession of that evidence. I have the evidence? Your first bullet battle time or bullet time battle is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Yes. Sometimes during class trial, your opponent simply won't want to hear what you have to say. When that happens, you will engage them in a head-to-head -head battle. We refer this to the bullet truth time battle, aka BTB BTW. The BTB, you want to destroy your opponent's statements in time with the rhythm. Match the buttons, button presses with each tempo marker as they move across the screen, screen and reach the center. Press the A button to lock on to an opponent's statement. Destroy the statement you've locked on with the Y button as the tempo maker reaches the center. Use this method to deal damage to your opponent. If you can't pull it off, you'll be the one in pain. Do this consecutively and you'll start a combo. Keep it up to initiate the, a tempo up. On the flip side, if you keep missing, you'll get a tempo down situation. Tempo changes. When the tempo changes, so does the timing of each button. So watch out for that. Deal enough damage to your opponent with their weak spot statement. Their weak spot statements will appear. At that point, you can hit Y and shoot it down with a truth bullet like any other statement. Review their statement fast enough and you'll become victorious. Like I said before, your influence gauge reaches zero. You or you run out of time, you fail. Look, look at how fun. When the killer broke the bathroom doorknob, they didn't use anything from your room to do it. So what did the killer use? What did the killer use to take part of the doorknob? I acknowledge you. You're stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. I have to show indisputable evidence that Leon's the killer. I need to figure it out. Moment of truth. Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance. It wasn't me. Stupid. You lie. Stop talking. Shut up. Here's your proof. You kidding me? Not a chance. You lie. Shut up. Here's your proof. You kidding me? Not a chance. It wasn't me. Stupid. You lie. Stop talking. Shut up. Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance. You lie. Shut up. Shut up. Stupid. Where's your proof? You kidding me? 
Not a chance. Where's your proof? This should prove it. The screws on the bathroom doorknob were removed. I wonder what kind of tool the killer used to remove them. I mean, it had to be a screwdriver, right? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure the tool kits we got each had one inside. And that must be what he used. There aren't any other tools anywhere. But the tool kit in my room had clearly never been used. That's because the culprit didn't know it was your room. They thought they were in Sayaka's room. Only the boys got tool kits, so the killer naturally assumed there wouldn't be one in there. Okay, then whose tool kit did the killer use? Stupid, stupid, stupid! It had to be their very own tool kit. Stupid, 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 stupid! Leon, would you mind showing us your tool kit? If I'm right about this, then the screwdriver will show some evidence of being used. Stupid, stupid, stupid! Uh, huh? And if you say you used it for something else, you'll have to explain exactly when, where, and why. And let me say this right now. I lost it isn't an excuse at this point. Stoop! <laughs> so, you have no rebuttal? Then it would seem we are finished here. <laughs> Looks like you've reached your verdict. Then are we ready to cast our votes? You all have a lever in front of you. Use it to make your selection. Oh, just to remind you all, make triple sure you vote for someone. You wouldn't want to be punished for something so minor, right? Okay, then let's get excited! Who will be chosen as the Blackened? Will you make the right choice? Or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Who is found guilty? Monokuma vote. Uh-oh, looks like you're right on the money. The blackened in this case is the one that killed Sayaka. It was none other than Leon Kuwata. Huh? Hey, hold on. Leon, Leon, did you really kill Sayaka? But I don't believe you it. Son of a bitch. What the heck was wrong with you? I, I didn't have a choice. It was kill or be killed. So that's why I killed her first. None of you are any different. One wrong step and you'd be the one standing here. It was a complete chance that I would end up like I this. Was just <laughs> unlucky. That's all. Yeah. Hey, come on. You have to accept you you, you accept expect me to just accept my death. Everything becomes clear. The decision we made was right after all. But when I think about that, honestly, I'd be better off if we'd been wrong. Because if we had come up with really is the truth, then the truth is Sayaka is going to frame it on me. But even if that was true, I can't say that she was wrong. After all, the mastermind. It's all because of that video. Even I couldn't handle what I saw in there. If I was her, the video... And the video actually had something to do with me. I can't even imagine. Now we're trapped here. With no way out. They're probably waiting for me. Why? I can't Why? afford to be stuck here. The one thing that was more important than her, to her than anything else. Her dreams. Her friends. 
to have to see something like that happen to them and Sayaka. I... I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean it. Even some things that weren't so pleasant. And that's why Sayaka, for the friends that meant so much to her, that's why she betrayed me. So what she said... No matter what happens, please always be there for me. I need you on my side. She was lying to me from the very beginning. She was just using me. Is that why she talked to me in the first place? I guess I'll never know. Because there's nothing I can do to ask her what she was thinking. Once you're dead, that's that. <laughs> Boy, howdy, the entertainment industry must make sure or be sure terrifying. I mean, try and kill someone just because of those relationships? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She seems so nice and lovely on the outside. On the inside, she descended into pure madness. What did you say? <laughs> I understand. I really do. Yup, yup. You're in utter despair thanks to Sayaka's betrayal, right? Compassion, intimacy, love. The stronger those feelings, the stronger the despair when they collapse. Stop screwing with us. This is all your fault in the first place. Sayaka being forced to do something like that. All of it. Everything. It is all your fault. Suddenly in a frenzy, it lends at Monokuma, but... That's enough. As angry as I was, Kyoko launched out onto my arm without hesitation. Her grip was like iron. Strong enough, it, it was sure I would leave a bruise. Calm down. If you really want to make her em enemies pay for what they had done, you need to let it go for now. Ba -bum, ba -bum. Ah, that was a close one. I thought for sure you were going to give me a good walloping. <laughs> Just barely avoided punishment, you did. Yes, indeed. Now then, since you've mag so magnificently revealed the identity of the killer during the class trial, the blackened Liakuawata will receive his punishment. Pun punishment? You mean... Execution? Wait a second! I didn't have a choice. I had to yeah, kill her. That's it? Yeah, that's it. I was just protecting myself in the heat of the moment. It was self defense. Is that okay? How exactly was it self defense? Hmm. For when you forced your way into the bathroom, did you or did you not use your very own toolkit? After she'd shut herself in the bathroom, you went out of your way to head out. Uh, you went out of your way. To head back it to your room. Then you came all the way back and broke into the bathroom and killed her. Am I wrong? Do you understand? You had any numbers of chance, any number of chances to stop what you were doing, but you chose not to. Is it not because you had unclouded intent on to commit murder? So stop. I've heard enough of this. Oh. Oh, are you sure you you were closer to her than anyone? Were you not? He killed your precious Sayaka. Do you understand? He, I can't say Leon is solely to blame. Of course, I do not plan on blaming Sayaka either. Because... Because the one to blame is him. So what? Uh, if it weren't for you, this would have never happened to Sayaka or Leon. We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be fighting against the one who put us in this situation. The mastermind. Uh, did you awaken your sense of justice hey, this morning? Um... Well... And it just so happens there's nothing more unethical than unwavering sense of justice. After all, it's the people with this sort of mentality to perpetuate war all over the world. Hmm. Is that the kind of justice that awakened within you? Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, more importantly, Hi, let's chills, hurry up and get kills. what everyone's been waiting for. The punishments! I'm begging you! Please, don't do this! Hey! Come on now. No more begging. No more excuses. You must pay for the penalty for breaking the rules. Society demands it. Stop. Please. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment. No, 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 no. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. No. Oh no. Oh my gosh.
<gasps> He's going to be pelted by pitching balls. No! <laughs> 100 mile an hour baseballs. Oh my. Oh. He's getting stoned with baseballs. And bludgeoned with them. What we saw that was a true face of despair i mean if we can call it that what else could we call it Extreme! Ooh, my adrenaline is pumping out of control Why? what is going on i, I can't take it do we really have to keep doing this i just can't take it well well hey if you don't like it <laughs> all you gotta do is swear to cut all ties with the outside world and accept living here forever. But that's only if every single one of you can get on board with that. <laughs> Damn you! Why the heck do you keep doing all of this evil? What the heck? Evil? You make it sound like I'm some dark awful secret society type of guy what? or in this case a dark awful secret society type of bear well. um well um so why are you putting us an upstanding young citizen like me through this grueling ordeal hey, um... it seems like you're trying to use common sense to make sense of something that doesn't make any sense at all that's like trying to put a mile on a scale I don't think it's possible. Um, hey, um, I don't think you're th what you're saying and what I'm saying are quite fit together. <sighs> Shit. You're a piece of work. I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna pound you to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you must really hate me to get that angry, huh? But if you do that, you're ba barking way up the wrong tree. <laughs> what happened happened. Because more than one of you decided you wanted to get out, right? No matter how much time passes, you can't cut free of the regrets from the outside world. You're to blame. <laughs> of, of course we can cut f f free from the outside world. Being tra tra trapped in a place is like insane. Hmm. Oh, you're trapped, are you? Well, I'm sure you'll learn all the mysteries of the school you're thinking that will change for sure. You think, boy, isn't it so wonderful how we all can live here forever? What does this mean? What are you even trying to say? Hey. I feel like there's a deeper meaning hidden behind there. Just like before. Kills, kills, Anyways, kills. let's get to the Blacken's punishment. That's what everyone is waiting for after all. Hey. When you say everyone, who are you exactly referring to? <laughs> Sorry, I said everything I've got to I've got to say. I need to save some more fun for later. <laughs> and just like that, he was gone. He left us there, overwhelmed by nighttime and turned into reality. After he's gone, we stood there forever, unable to process what happened. Actually, no, it wasn't that long, I think. Everyone just lost their sense of time. We were all too scared. Scared of being alone. No. One even tried to speak. Their faces were stone and their voices were dead. It was at this moment. Just a second. Makoto, can I talk to you for a second? She moved close and whispered into my ear. Makoto. Before we head back, there's something I want to talk to you about. It's about Sayaka, isn't it? 
I'm surprised you figured it out. Listen. I told you before the class trial even started. You have to figure out the mystery of the case yourself. You wanted me to realize how Sayaka betrayed me by myself, didn't you? The thought never even crossed my mind. I feel like such a fool becoming such an easy target like that. It's true. Sayaka meant to double cross you. That is a fact that you can never change. But until the very end, she wasn't sure of her decision. That's why. As she lay dying, she was thinking of you. She was thinking of me. You can't just say something like that. I mean, there's no way you could know that. Only Sayaka would know for sure, and we can't even ask her now. However, Even if you can't ask her, you can infer it, don't you think? Her final thought how was how she could protect you. What? So the fact that she used her every last out every last ounce of energy to leave her dying message proves it. She didn't care what happened to you. She never if she didn't care what happened to you, she would have never left that message. Well, maybe she just wanted to get back the person who killed her. Certainly. That's certainly one plausibility. But I don't think that was all it anyway. was. She was uncertain. She wasn't sure she could kill someone or deceive you, which is why her plan failed. Her hesitation attracted failure. Right. It's almost ironic when you think about it. Why are you telling me all this? Because I think you're a kind of a person who can overcome this. Because you move, you can move past the deaths of your friends Sayaka and Leon and keep moving forward. Correct. Without someone like that, the others would never be able to break free of such desperate so, uh, of such a different situation move past their deaths that's I could never do that no I'm going to carry them with me for the rest of my life how could I possibly move past something like that Leon, Sayaka I'll be carrying them with me forever I'll carry their memories with me wherever I go so instead of forgetting them you're choosing the hard road <laughs> well I have high expectations for you as she said that she revealed the smallest hey. smile by the way I have to admit I'm curious. How did you know I wanted to talk to you about Sayaka? Oh well. I'm psychic. What? Huh? Kidding. I have pretty good intuition. And in the next episode, we'll be heading on to the next chapter. We got a despair bat. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This is two episodes in one, so you'll have an out two out uh, two outros. I just have to make the other outro. Find out where I want to do it. But yeah, love you all. Bye.